Okay, so how am I going to stitch my pages on to my accordion? Well, as you know, in the previous video, which I'll, oh God, I hope I remember to link it, um, I pinned these and I showed you how I prepared them. Um, and I did iron creases into them because that just makes life so much easier. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I, I, I'm a very bad person. I'm going to leave my my um, other pieces pinned and it will be a bit annoying. But what I'm going to do is just go like this and just have that like that. So you can just open them out and um, stitch them. Now I'm thinking, so I could just use a plain thread here and just do an invisible stitch and stitch it down if I just want to have that look. But I'm thinking I'm going to do, and I won't make you sit through all of it, um, I'm going to do a little, um, I'll tell you what this thread is. This is a perle, and it's a um, DMC, um, it's called Alsace, Retours d'Alsace. I can't, I'm not French, I can't pronounce it. Um, 20 grams, number eight, and the number is 931. I love that blue. I use it a lot in my um, regular th six-stranded threads as well. So I'm a lefty, so I'm going to start from here. But if you're right-handed, you start from there. And I don't, I do love my little, um, I love my edging. I love the rough edging. I don't, I don't want to, I, I embrace the rough edging. So Anyway, I'm just going to see what this looks like. If I don't like it, I'll take it out. But I'm thinking I'm going to do little teeny tiny, just little ones. Little overcast or whip stitch to hold it in place. I probably should tack it, but if I'm careful, like with my mat, I can just go like this. And I'm going to leave a little, quite a space. I could even do them even smaller. You can do blanket stitch, you could do running stitch. Um, you can do any stitch really that will hold it in place. You could do invisible stitch as I said. And I'm sort of deciding, will I stitch them all in the same? I'm actually thinking these ones, I'm going to running stitch around them. And I'm wondering if I want to, I'm looking at them. See, this is what happens. I just look at things as I go. See, I don't want to catch that. I'm going to leave that sticking up. Yes, I'm liking this. It's uneven. It's perfect. See, look how easy this is. Just making sure I'm catching my base thread. Otherwise, I'll have a, a hole. Now, if this is the time before you do this, if you wanted to put a tab like Sarah did, um, you would slip that in. Oh, that was a big stitch. I didn't want such big stitches. So I'm going to keep it. Just I'm, The reason why I'm not lifting it up like I normally would is because I haven't tacked it down and I don't want it to be, you know, to bunch up. So... I'm just making sure it stays flat. I can pick it up down when it's down nearing the end. And all my stitches are uneven, and I like that. Now that's a bit thicker there, so oh, I'm having trouble jumping across. There we go. So you can be as fancy or as not fancy as you like doing this. It doesn't take long. Also, if you wanted to really, really attach it, you could do some invisible stitching as well and add even more texture to it. And I might decide to do that. I'll just see how um, puffy it is. And I'm loving that. 
I'm glad I chose the blue. So I just pick it up very carefully, like so, and just turn it around. So I don't want to lose all my creases either. And then here I'm just going to go around this edge. I'm not worrying about how am I going to, you know, stitch my pages together. I'm not worried about that. It's not a problem. We'll work it out. So I'll pause you in a second. I'll finish off this. You've seen plenty. I'm just going around the edge like that. take the pins out now. I'm loving the look of this. This is very exciting to me. Um, the other thing I've, my, uh, you know, I kept going on about my crunchy spine. Um, I'll probably cover that up with some sort of slow stitch. Okay, so I'm just going to end this off and then I'll get a new thread and I'll finish off those three and then I'll come and make a start on this one. I'm thinking I'd love this one, but I want it to be thick. I might have to use two strands or I'd love to use a wool or something like that. I mean, you could do something very decorative around that if you wanted to. I don't know. Sometimes I just like to keep things a bit more simple. So... I have been asked, how did I do my wormy knots? They're very easy. Um, I'll have to show you that, but I probably won't show it this week. It's just because that's, yeah, I'm not, I, I'd ha I have to take a separate piece or something and, and do that. So I'll pause the video, I'll finish this one off and then we'll stitch down one of these. I'll put some more pins in it. So you can be at doing these um, as you go. Um, and then don't worry about the construction of the book until the end. Yes. Okay, so I'll be back soon. Okay, so I'm back. I've stitched this one on and I'm loving the look of that. Really loving the look of that. I'm looking at these because these were the single, even though they're like a hemp, they're not a thin fabric, but this is a nice robust piece of fabric. And these are quite thin because they're, you know, one just done on the one fabric. And I, I'm actually thinking... So if I stitch that around, it's going to look a bit loose and I don't like that look. So I am actually going to um, do a bit of the invisible stitch to hold it down. Maybe, you know, one, every, you know, every inch, do a row of invisible stitch to really secure it down onto the page. So I think I'll do that today for both of those, this one as well. And then um, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a, a sort of, it's going to be a back stitch, but it's going to be a back stitch that has a little tiny gap between the two stitches. Um, so yeah, that takes a while to do, So, but I'll show you that. I'll, I'll come back and do that, but I might do that tomorrow because I'm going to, it'll take me a minute to stitch these on. So let's just have a look. So I've pinned that on better. I'll pin this one on a bit better. I may need to reposition them just so they're, in a better sort of way if they're not straight or something like that but I'll just pin those on better because I wanted to see the, how it's going to look with the bunny it's very exciting very exciting okay so I'm going to put that in there so I'm thinking yes those are going to have that but I think most of my blocks will probably be stitched on this way because um, I think it it just sort of complements them. Let me just see here. That's the next page. And just, yeah, just make sure you keep, you know, re-creasing where your creases are. And you don't need, if you haven't decided whether you're going to do it this way or like a, like a journal style way, like, you know, like you would put in your journal pages, um, signatures, then you don't need to be looking at this step yet. You can watch it later and decide later there's no need to decide now but um, we're just showing you because there were quite a few people concerned about it so this is what my book is looking like so far let me just grab this I haven't decided the inside I have decided to cover even though the spine is leather it's cr it's crunching and in poor condition so basically um, that will go 
the other way. They'll, they'll attach in, but I haven't decided. I'll probably do a hidden spine technique like I, I've showed doing journal sort of thing. So when you open the book, I've got quite a big, you know, a lot of space for growth. This is what, these will be whip stitched together and this is what you'll see like that. And then this one is going to go on here and it's probably, I knew it would have shrunk, but I, that's why I chose this color. I feel like it goes really well. So that's going to be month one. So it's going to be like this. And then, oh, and this. So that's where we are. And then there'll be month two. So I guess also another thing to think about too is when you do your next block, um, they don't have to coordinate, but they need to sort of sit well together. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to go and put neon colours, although they could look nice. I don't know over here. I mean, I, I don't do neon anyway, but well, I like a little bit here and there. But there you go. That's what it's going to look like. It's so exciting. And I love the... Um, the sample pages as well and that's the front so there you go so I'm going to go ahead and stitch those on and that one I'm going to stitch on exactly the same way I think this will look perfectly nice with that um, I'm going to stitch it on exactly the same way as I did my title page but I'll come back and show you the back stitch that I'm going to do around these and that's going to kind of frame the samplers um, as well and finish them off a little bit but I feel like they need to be attached down better um, so they're not if I only do stitching around there they'll be a little bit sort of puffy here so yeah so there we go so I'll, I'll add a little bit more on to this video when I'm with those tomorrow and um, but you'll see it today because it'll be like within a second and yes I hope that's clear to everyone and thank you so much and I will see you in a second Bye. okay guys so here I am I haven't stitched my bunny in, but I'm going to stitch my bunny in a similar way to that one. Excuse me. Um, I have invisible stitch these on, like I showed you in the video number one. Maybe when I did this, I can't remember. So you can see there, it's been totally stitched on because I didn't like it to be all puffy. Now, what stitch was I going to do? I'm using the same stitch thread as this because I wanted to use two actually, I forgot. So let's have a look. Might need a needle with a bigger eye. I don't know if I'll be able to thread this, but we will try. Sometimes I just like a thinner needle and what, what I've done too to help me with my cordon is I just clip them together so they don't annoy me. Well, they, they still annoy me, but they annoy me a bit less. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to start here because I'm a lefty and about, um, I'm thinking in the middle. Yeah, I'm going to do my row of stitches in the middle, not on the edge and leave that gap. So it's kind of, I'm going to kind of wing it where the middle is. And I'm going to do like, it's going to be, oh, I didn't put a knot in. It's going to be like a running stitch, but I might not be able to um, get my running stitch to, to um, be as, like, a, as small a gap, like a really small gap between the running stitches. I want it to be really small. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, well, I'll try... Let's try, give it a go. See, I want to do a tiny gap. I want it smaller than that, actually. So I'm going to do like a... No, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I have to just stab. Let's see. I want a little, little gap between the stitches. I can hold it now comfortably, too, because... Let's see if I can get it. Maybe that'll be my gap. I'd like to do it in the running stitch fashion. Because the other way, if I, oh, I did do a good job there. Because um, otherwise you can come forward and then come back. But not exactly at. But then you'd have to figure out your distance. Let's just try one. But that's a waste. It is a waste of thread. You'll use a lot more thread. So you could come back then 
and go there and then come forward guessing and that way you can get your little gap but I think I'm going to try and do it the running stitch method see that one see I've made that one too long now but I'm I'm, I'm not going to be too pedantic let's just see just catch a little bit use your thumb I might I'm going through quite a th few layers here so I might need to put on a silicon thimble to help me pull the needle through So that's what I'm going to do all the way around the edge. It won't be perfectly even. Also, I'm thinking as I'm going that I couldn't get that one. Um, depending because this is like a, um, a hemp so sometimes you get a, a thread that's quite thick makes life difficult and then I thought you know I could go around and I could um, I could have done a fancy stitch around but then I thought it's pretty busy the the sampler so I didn't think that I really wanted to do that So it's a bit of a slower canthus stitch, a running stitch than normal because I'm trying to keep my gaps small. Just tuck that in, thread. And it won't be perfectly straight, but I don't worry about that. I try, just try and do my best. So we'll just finish a little bit and then, and then I'll end the video and then there'll be photographs at the end. I may not get that one done today. Um, but I'll try and finish this one just so you can see the photographs. I do think it's nice to take your time with the with the whole process because I was talking to Mum about it. Um, what I found is when I take my time and sort of have a little space in between when I do things. Uh, I sort of mull over it sort of a little bit and sort of like you know when you when you live when you're going to renovate and you've lived there for a while and you sort of get a better feel for um, your place and you know better how you want to um, sort of divide the space and everything and what you need uh, it's, I find it's a similar process here like taking my time lets me think about it more about how it's going to be whereas if I do something quickly I haven't really contemplated it very enough and I might make might do something that I think oh I should have done that and I mean I still do that now even with the, with this one I'm sure there's things there that I I can't remember now but I'm sure there's things oh I wish I did that I shouldn't have done it like that but you know No, an example is here. I did this and I waited till I'd done that and then I sort of thought about it and then I thought, oh, this could look nice up here. And then I did those bits, but then I stopped there and I thought, I don't want to fill up down there with those. Um, so I waited till I'd done these and then I thought, oh, I'll have some little ones. And then and then when I did that, and then I thought, well, I need something in there. So you know, that, that's what I mean, like just taking my time and doing each little step brings me to the next step. But if I rush, I might that it doesn't happen so well.
I mean, of course, that's different. For, there are people who are super confident out there that really know what they're going to do. Um, but it's not like that. That's not my. That's not how my process works. I'm going to just turn the corner here about midway, midway between here and here, and then just turn it around. And having them clipped together like this is great. It's much easier to manage. And then I just continue on here. And that's just going to frame my samplers. I'm trying to keep my things as small as possible. But I have failed there. But you sort of don't focus on that because once it's all done in the scheme of things, it's not like your eye is going to directly go there. And so if you've already done this sort of sort of frame around your thing, then you can just do an invisible stitch and stitch it on and then it looks like you've did all right through the thing. So I'm going to finish that off and then I'll put some photographs. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful. Um, that's how I'm going to put my block together. I'm going to put this one on the same way I put that one. And, um, and then I will see how it proceeds. So thank you so much for watching and happy stitching and have a great day. Bye.